Alright, what's up everybody? So, the other day I was working on a mix and I was faced with the decision on whether or not I wanted to use physical hardware or use a plugin. So, in the process of trying to decide which one I wanted to go with, it gave me the idea for this video. What I wanted to do is I want to try out the KT2A, stack it up side by side with the LA2A plugin that is from Universal Audio, and see which one out of the two sounds the best. In my opinion, the best LA2A plugin out there that is cloning the LA2A physical hardware is the plugin by Universal Audio. In my opinion, it sounds the closest to it and just overall sounds the best. Now, I also really, really love the KT2A. I think this is a phenomenal choice when you are looking for a LA2A style compressor. What we're gonna do is we're going to demo both of these side by side and see which one out of the two overall sounds better. Which of the two should you go with if you are trying to achieve a LA2A style compression. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump straight into the video. Now, something that I wanna make very clear between these two compressors is that with the UA plugin, they are straight up aiming to achieve the sound that comes from the Teletronics LA2A. They are straight up trying to model that compressor. With the KT2A, they're more so going for their own style, I guess you could say, of optical compression. So the KT2A is meant to sound like the KT2A, whereas the UA is meant to sound like the Teletronics LA2A. Now with that being said, in my opinion, the KT2A still has that sound that is very much so Teletronics LA2A style compression. It is, in my opinion, it is cloning that sound. So while there is an argument that the KT2A is doing its own compression, it is meant to sound like the KT2A, I still, in my opinion, think that it is a LA2A clone. This is modeling the LA2A style compression. For these tests between these compressors, I wanna try three variants of compression. I wanna use light compression, mild compression, and then aggressive compression. With a light compression, I'm probably gonna only compress around one to three dB, mild compression, four to five, maybe six dB, and then for aggressive, anywhere from seven to 10, 11 dB of gain reduction. And I really want you to pay attention to the subtle differences between them. Really, you have to understand that the KT2A is physical hardware. So it's going to be running through tubes and circuitry, whereas this is just a plugin. So really, really focus on the sound and pay attention to the subtle nuances because that is ultimately what's going to separate them from each other. Those tiny subtle differences that add up in the grand scheme of things. So far, what you have heard is no compression. I have been just using the MPA2 going directly into my Apollo Solo. So no compression, just the preamp working. But what I wanna start doing now is run the MPA into the KT2A, and then we will dial in our settings to get the compression that I had mentioned earlier. All right, and now we are using the KT2A in the vocal chain. I am running the Art Pro MPA2 into the KT2A and then that into my Apollo Solo. And as I had mentioned earlier in the video, I'm only aiming for right around two to three decibels of gain reduction. And in case you guys are wondering, I am recording my levels at minus 24 to minus 23 LUFS short term. This is how my vocals would normally sound like when I record for a track. I like using my compressor going into my DAW. I just find that it makes the vocals sound a little bit better going in and it just makes my work process a little bit easier. Now, what I wanna do next is just crank up the peak reduction and get somewhere right around five to six decibels of gain reduction so that you guys can hear what it sounds like when you start using mild compression. So with that being said, let's go ahead and change up our settings. All right, and now we are getting about five to six decibels of gain reduction. I just made up for that with my output gain and we are right back at minus 24 to minus 23 LUFS short term. So this is this is definitely a lot more aggressive than the prior compression that we used. However, I would consider this mild. Uh, I typically use a, a style of compression like this uh, with my plugins if I'm working on my vocal tracks. I do like the way that five to six decibels of gain reduction sounds. Um, I usually don't go any higher than that. But if I'm recording into my DAW when I'm recording my tracks, I definitely 
keep it light anywhere from one to three decibels of gain reduction. All right, and here is what it sounds like with about 10 to 12 decibels of gain reduction. What you're gonna start noticing is that the more compression you use, the more of the room ambience you're gonna start picking up. The room that I am in is not treated whatsoever, so you're hearing all of the reverberation in this room. It would sound a whole lot better if I did this in my vocal booth, but for the video's sake, we're doing it out here. You're gonna start hearing all of the room ambience. You're gonna start hearing my fans on my light over here. It's not going to sound as clean. However, if we were in the vocal booth, it would definitely sound a lot better. I personally would not use this amount of gain reduction. It's just way, way too much for my liking, but maybe this is something that you are into. It could be a very stylistic choice. Okay, and then here we are back at a very light amount of compression, about two to three decibels of gain reduction. So that is what the hardware sounds like. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch from running it into the KT2A, we're gonna go just from the MPA directly into the preamp, and then we're gonna use the plugin in real time so that we can match our settings exactly like how we had it on the physical hardware. All right, and here we are using the Teletronics LA2A plugin. I'm getting about two to three decibels of gain reduction, and in my DAW, I am recording right about at minus 24 to minus 23 LUFS short term. So that's exactly what I was getting in the KT2A. This is how the plugin sounds like. All right, and this is what mild compression sounds like with the plugin. Again, I'm getting about five to seven decibels of gain reduction. It's usually right around at five. And for my levels in my DAW, I am recording at about minus 24 to minus 23 LUFS short term. This is what mild compression sounds like on the plugin. And here is how it sounds like with 10 decibels of gain reduction. I've matched my settings as best as I possibly can to the KT2A. I'm recording in at minus 25 to minus 23 LUFS short term. This is what aggressive compression sounds like on the LA2A plugin. So that is what it sounds like. That is aggressive compression or I guess just compression in general on the LA2A plugin. I match this so that they are pretty much identical for the most part. The only differences being that one is hardware and the other is a plugin. Now, before I end this video, I wanna mention something about the prices. Believe it or not, it is actually cheaper to go out and buy the hardware over the plugin. To use the plugin, you need to use either a interface or the DSP accelerator from Universal Audio. As of right now, the cheapest interface on the market from UA is the Apollo Solo, the interface that I'm currently using right now. That will run you $500. For the hardware, you can catch these things going used for under $300. If you want to buy it brand new, I believe it is $400, but you can typically find these used for under $300. With that being said, you can have physical, a actual physical compressor that is modeling the LA2A for cheaper than the plugin. It's just something to keep in mind when you are trying to decide which of the two you want to go for. Anyways, guys, that about wraps it up. If you haven't already yet, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can stay notified for whenever I drop my upcoming videos. With all that being said, I will see you all in my next video. Take care, everybody. Peace out.